Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Quiz Demo. So this is the uh, video of another project that is brain tumor detection using deep learning approach. And in this uh, project we will be using brain MRI images for detecting three different types of tumors and uh, so we will be building basically multi-classification deep learning model. And in this, uh, we will be classifying three different types of tumors, and one is the no tumor that is normal, uh, normal brain. So it's a very important use case because, uh, in terms of healthcare, it is very crucial because most of the time, uh, when radiologist examines these brain MRI images, they <coughs> used to do certain errors sometimes and uh, most of the time misclassification of certain tumors so by building or advancing deep learning models and uh, automatically identifying patterns for classification of these tumors will really help and will really assist radiologists in accurately uh, identifying these brain tumors so you can understand what what uh, enormous impact there will be having on uh, healthcare industries in the future. So, <clears throat> and uh, based on the complexity also it is quite uh, complex because we will be cropping the images, we will be doing certain image preprocessing based on the image quality, resizing and doing lots of stuff. So, uh, this this project will be really, really uh, interesting for all, of, for all of you. So, uh, please do, do watch this video till the end. So basically in this part one, we will be discussing the main problem statement of the uh, of this use case and we will be discussing certain complexity that we will be handling in the next part uh, where we will be actually coding uh, and building a model. So uh, the problem statement is that I told you that brain tumor uh, identification we have to do using brain MRI images. So you can see that is the brain MRI. Uh, cropped out image and uh, so before jumping to the uh, actual uh, brain tumor classification technique, we first need to understand what is brain tumor. So brain tumor is basically the accumulation or you can say collection of mass or growth of abnormal cells in the brain. Okay. Now, uh, there are basically two types of brain tumors that is malignant and benign. So malignants are really very serious and they require immediate treatment else they will, be, they will become fatal. And benigns are slightly uh, less, you can say, uh, they don't have much impact or they don't uh, interfere much with other parts of the body and they remain uh, silent. So they don't require immediate treatment, but yes, uh, in some of the cases when I am also uh, the malignant cases. So these are very rare. So malignant brain tumors are relatively rare, right? Because in brain, a malignant brain tumors are seriously rare, very few cases. Uh, but when it comes, so its treatment is very uh, important and immediate. So, uh, malignant brain tumors are basically accounts for only 1 to 2 percent of all types of cancers in adult. Uh, but, but the main thing is that they have very low survival rate. So, that's why it is very important to identify uh, malignant brain tumors in a very uh, initial stage. Uh, so, if not uh, treated at initial phase, it may definitely lead to death. And according to research studies, uh, it is found that there are <coughs> most malignant brain tumors, uh, and most of the malignant brain tumors occurs uh, in Europe, Canada, United States, and Australia region, whereas its um, frequency or its number of cases are relatively lower in the Asian part, that is East Asia, Southeast Asia, and India. That is maybe based on the environmental factors, you can say, uh, types of habits they have. Right? So, there may be different reasons, location, and many, many things. So, uh, this is the actual distribution, overall distribution. 
So now uh, we move to project overview. So what we'll be going to do. So in this project, we'll be building, uh, as I told you, multi-class classification model, CNN model. And uh, we'll not be building a CNN model from the scratch. So we'll be using a uh, transfer learning approach and in that we'll be using Dustin. Okay. And uh, basically, we'll be classifying three different types of uh, brain tumors. Uh, that is, first is glioma, right? second is menin glioma, third is pituitary, pituitary, and the fourth one is the normal cases of the mood. So that uh, if, if uh, uh, any image comes, let's say in mobile app or in uh, web application, the system should automatically identify the probability of these brain tumors. So for building this uh, deep learning model, we will be using brain tumor MRI dataset that is available on CATO and it has very good number of images that's why we will use this. So as you can see the distribution of images uh, which we have used, in, uh, which we will be using in training our, in training our model, right? uh, that is glioma, it is around 1321, and glioma 1339, glioma 1337 and not even So we have significantly good number of uh, images for all the classes. Now, uh, for validating also, we will be validating on a very good number of images and uh, on these test data. And uh, please uh, be careful while uh, when we test any deep learning or computer vision model. That is very important because sometimes we test it on the scene data. In the sense, uh, we use the data, let's say, uh, data of 1000 images. 1000 images, we divide it into train and test set. We train our model right, by training on train data and validating on the test data within that 1000 images. Right? But when we keep on uh, fine tuning our models uh, by changing the layers, by changing the activation functions, by changing certain other hyperparameters, uh, so in that case, test data sometimes compromised and model tries to learn the pattern of the test data also. So in that case, that evaluation of the model uh, is not, will not be uh, proper, okay. So it will not be remain unseen. So that's why uh, in this, in this project, we will not be touching uh, test data, right. We will be uh, only training on train data and then uh, testing on tested, which will be <coughs> So uh, next, uh, now we'll uh, talk about each of the, each of the brain tumors. So first is the glioma. So according to John Hopkins medicine, glioma is a very common type of tumor originating in the brain and it uh, compares about 33% of all the brain tumors. Okay. And uh, where it occurs basically, it, it occurs in the glial cell, which is the gluey support cells, which surrounds and support the neurons in the brain. Okay, so the region is quite sensitive. You can see that, uh, and that's why they are really fatal and they are really malignant. Okay, and, and these are, as you can see, that it, it affects directly the brain function. And they are really life threatening. Uh, but it depends that uh, where, uh, in, in what location they are occurring, right? And uh, what's their rate of growth. Okay. Sometimes some gliomas are also uh, benign, also, but uh, most of the cases uh, these are very fatal. And uh, basically, these uh, tumors occur in three types of glial cells. Okay. What uh, glial cells are uh, that, that is astrocytomas, ependymomas, and oligodendrogliomas. So these three type of cells which are really involved in uh, producing these types of tumors. Next is the meningioma. So meningioma is basically a primary central nervous system tumor. Why it's so? Because it begins in the brain or spinal cord also. So it directly affects our spinal cord as you can see its location. Right? 
So, <coughs> and uh, where it forms basically, this uh, uh, tumor forms on three layers of membranes that are called as meningitis. So these tumors are often slow growing, so they are mostly non cancerous. 90% of the cases they are benign, non cancerous. But often, meningitis. Uh, and most of the cases, uh, they cause no symptoms because, as you can see, these are benign non cancerous and they also require no immediate treatment. But growth of benign meningomas can cause serious problems, and in some cases, it can also grow into fatal or malignant tumors. Third comes uh, that pituitary. pituitary. So pituitary tumor is a tumor that forms in the pituitary gland. So pituitary gland is basically near the brain that can cause changes in the hormone levels of the body. So as you can see, this is the pituitary gland and how where it occurs basically. It is, it, it is uh, near the, you can see, fleshy part of the mouth, just above that. And when any tumor uh, uh, develops in the pituitary gland, it remains within the gland and it cannot spread. So these these types of pituitary tumors are also uh, are not very uh, you can say uh, malignant. They are they are also uh, uh, benign. Okay, but they may cause serious uh, health problems because they are close to brain. Okay, so what types of uh, problems? Uh, because it affects, it pushes the uh, side walls of the brain, okay, and uh, and they they are very near to skulls, so they can also disturb that also. So other the other problems they can occur, but they cannot develop mostly into uh, malignant cases. But there are pituitary cancers also that are very very rare, and these are known as uh, uh, pituitary carcinomas. So now comes the important part, uh, which is the very challenging part, okay, and very interesting also. So uh, these brain MRI images are basically collected from different sources, and these images are of having different sizes. So the first thing is that we have to convert all the images into one uh, size and shape. Okay. So we have converted into 200 cross 200. Because only then any model you can uh, train on that. Else the model will not be able to, uh, cannot actually train your model on a different size and shape. Okay. Other major issue with this uh, uh, brain MRI images uh, was that you can see that there are a very uh, uh, black portion. In the, in the image, okay, which is unnecessary for our analysis for our uh, model building, and they are not uh, also showing any specific features, right? They are totally useless. So what we have to do, we have to crop it, right? So that the model can only focus where where uh, the important part of the brain. Okay. So we don't have to focus on other parts because these noises can can create uh, confusion in the model. Okay. So how? So what we are doing in while dropping the image? So first step, we are finding the biggest counter. You can see that. Uh, so biggest counter we are finding first. Second, we are finding extreme points. So extreme points in the sense extreme left, extreme right, uh, extreme up and extreme down. So what is the up and down limit, left and right? Based on that, we found the points, and within those points, getting those points, we are just cropping out that brain image and uh, getting our crop. Uh, so, uh, first of all, what we have done basically, first we have uh, resized it into 200 plus 200, and then we have uh, cropped the image, only taken the actual part, which is the brain. So, this is the important step we have performed. In the form of uh, image uh, processing. So next comes the modeling part. So in this project, as I told you, we have used uh, uh, ResNet 50 uh, P10 network for fine-tuning this brain tumor classification task. 
that the question is why we have used ResNet 50 because uh, here in this case we can understand there are lots of complex uh, uh, pattern within it. It is not that much easy to identify whether the tumor is present or not. Right? There are lots of uh, very complex cases and overlapped cases. So in that case we need complex model, not a lighter one like the uh, in the uh, previous video of a skin cancer project, we have used mobile net that is quite lighter. Uh, but it cannot be used for more complex cases. So, for understanding more complex uh, patterns within the images, we have to use something that is that is having more layers. And apart from that, uh, having layers, it should also be more accurate. Okay. So, I'm just uh, uh, giving you a short, uh, short summary of the concept why ResNet 50 is important for us. So, uh, when working with any deep convolution neural networks, okay, to solve a complex problem related to computer vision, uh, machine learning researchers actually in, was engaged in stacking more layers, and they have done an experiment to increase number of layers and see how the model performs, how the model behaves. So, one interesting pattern they found is that when they increase the number of layers uh, in learning the complex patterns, they, the accuracy improves significantly. But after a certain point, when adding more layers, it results in performance deg degradation. Performance degradation in the, in the sense that accuracy remains uh, going down, started going down and which, which results in overfitting. So that's why the pattern, uh, the, uh, the pattern, the researchers understand that uh, adding layers is good, but after a certain uh, point of time, if we add more and more and more layers, to understand more complex use cases, patterns, uh, it is very difficult and we cannot add simply layers and good. So, to tackle this problem, ResNet, ResNet was created basically. Uh, and ResNet comes with a residual network. As its, as its name is ResNet, so it is a residual network. And residual network basically comes with a very important feature that is skip connections. The skip connections works in two ways. First, they alleviate the use of vanishing gradient. They alleviate the issue of vanishing gradient. Okay, by setting up alternate shortcut for gradient to pass through. Okay, so every time the gradient don't have to pass in a uh, in a uh, in a by all the layers. Okay, so they can uh, pass through a shortcut. They can skip certain layers and uh, do the learning. Okay, so in that way we can break the uh, symmetry, and in that way we can. Uh, solve the problem of vanishing grid. Second is, they enable the model to learn an identity function. That is very important. This ensures that higher layers of the model do not perform any worse than the lower layers. Okay. So, in, in worst cases, if we keep on adding uh, layers, so higher layers, which we will be adding in the last, it should not make the system worse. So that's why one plus one convolution. See? So this makes sure that whatever is the learning you have, whatever the best learning you have, that will be your last level. By adding more layers, it should not affect the overall learning of the network. So that's why they are very good in learning complex tasks. That's why we'll be using ResNet 50 in building our uh, brain tumor classification. So thanks guys, thanks for watching this video and we will be connecting in the next video in which we will be showing uh, how we can build uh, a deep learning model and what image preprocessing technique will be applying. So each and every code I will be showing you step by step. Thanks, thanks for watching our video. Have a good day.